So today what I want to do is simply introduce you to this material, this really wonderful material, and um, maybe start thinking about how we can go further with it. Because as you're going to see, the models raise a lot of questions about architectural practice, about the meaning of architectural forms, like that very unique Armenian church form, about ritual. So they're not simply to be ignored, even though we can sometimes barely see them in these images. They're, they're very interesting and they're, they're worth our attention. So let's start by, you want to go, yes, let's start with what we might consider the most sort of easily categorized and identifiable um, group of models. And those are the models that we find held in the hands of donors who are giving their churches quite literally to um, Christ or the Virgin, usually Christ. Can I have the next one? Uh, this is the one we looked at in the, the, the general view before. It's from the Monastery of Hakpat. Um, the uh, main church dates to the 10th century. And here you see um, two princes holding the model between them, uh, Gurgen and Sumbat Khosrovanush. And you can see that they're standing, and between them in their hands, they have this, um, this model. Uh, can I have the next slide? I think I have a detail on the left. It's not a great detail, but it will have to do. You can see here that there's a general attempt to replicate the features of an Armenian church. You see again the kind of geometric um, profiling, the cylindrical drum here, the conical roof maybe just visible here. So there is, in a general sense, an attempt to kind of replicate the church as though it were an architectural portrait, something like that. Um, however, as uh, Cuneo noted, and as we can note too, it doesn't actually, interestingly, replicate any one side of the building. That is, that these niches that you see carved into the wall here and here, you see them, they occur on the east facade of Hakpat. But in here, you can also see there's a door. So this is what you would see on the west facade. So in a way, the model seems to present a composite of the different sides of the building. Um, little details are also included. For example, you have a little, little tiny little window. I don't know if you can make it out right here, um, which is kind of following the, the source, the, the main source. So, it's really interesting to take these models and to think about the question of really architectural portraiture, to what extent these models replicate or attempt to replicate the church that they are related to. Um, can I have the next slide? The most famous model of all um, in, in the Armenian world is located on the church of Akhtamar. So if you know any Armenian models, you probably know this one. Um, so you may know Akhtamar from its elaborate sculpture that, that, that covers the facades. Could I have the next, please? Um, and here you see, you know, very clearly uh, that, that wonderful sculptural program. Um, but also, very interestingly, uh, we have an image of the patron of the church, King Gagik, and you see him here, um, standing next to Christ, and Christ is on the other side, famously a, a few inches shorter then Gagik, um, and he's holding in his hands this amazing model of a church. And I think I have a detail, if we can go to that. Here's a detail, a better slide in some ways. Um, and you can see he's holding this magnificent model, and this huge model, and kind of pointing to it, and you know, presenting it to Christ who's on the other side of the window. Um, let's go to the next slide, because I think this, this, is a nice, this is a nice slide too. So you can see, again, the model is taking the form of a dome centralized structure. Um, and we can uh, note also that it is, unfortunately, it's kind of, it's, it's kind of damaged, unfortunately. But we can still make out some things. Um, maybe if we take go to the next slide. Sorry, Mark, I'm making you work here. Um, you can see that there is an attempt, again, for some kind of similitude. Um, I would say that the structure is, um, is similar, basically, again, the geometrical massing of the whole thing, the use of uh, those triangular niches, right, that you can see clearly here. You can see them replicated here, too, right, uh, as well as the use of windows um, and a door. So there's, there's, again, this sense of wanting to create something of a portrait. 
Very interesting, though, uh, is that it is not a precise portrait. And um, Cuneo noted, and uh, we should note, that the dome here appears to be, even though it's obviously quite damaged, does not appear to be a, con a conical, a conical, sorry, roof as we see in the, um, in the actual church. So this is very interesting. Precisely why this is, we don't know. Um, maybe the next slide will make that clearer. Um, you can see clearly here, it's not, it's nothing like a cone, even in its uh, damaged form. So one theory that, that Cuneo put forth is that the original dome of Akhtamar was, was a hemisphere as opposed to a cone. Um, a claim for which there's little evidence because, as you know, I mean, so many 10th century churches in Armenia characteristically have conical roofs as opposed to hemispherical roofs. So that would be very unusual if that were the case. Um, there might be other reasons uh, for this, um, but maybe, I suspect that maybe we're focusing too much, and Cuneo has focused too much on trying to find these direct one-to-one -one re relationships with, um, with the, the church. And really, that's been the focus of his work, um, trying to, um, to sort of understand how much these models represent um, faithfully their model. But I think that, just sort of thinking about this in a preliminary way, I think there are other ways we can talk about the models. I think that they may have had different kinds of functions, and that while it's interesting to talk about the form and comparing them and so forth, that maybe there was more to them than that, and particularly regarding these donor models. What's so interesting is that although in Byzantium, as I showed you those mosaics, and the, the donors are holding their churches in the paintings and the mosaics, those are all on the interior of the churches, all of those images. The Armenian models that are held by donors are all part of exterior sculpture. They're always on the outside. And I think this is really, really interesting. Um, and it gets to me to sort of the next, uh, the next area I'd like to explore. If we could just go to quickly to this, um, what might seem like a digression. I've been, in, in my own work on the 7th century, which is a little bit earlier, I've been working uh, very closely on the role of exterior uh, features like inscriptions, uh, like you see here and here, um, and exterior sculpture in rites of consecration. And it appears, uh, based on the in evidence from the inscriptions and from the sculpture, that the exterior of the church was used in, uh, in ritual, in ceremonial. So it wasn't only the interior of the church. Um, and if you can go to the next slide, we have evidence, for example, of rites in which uh, the congregation, together with the clergy, would actually walk around the structure. Um, and this is evidenced for example, by inscriptions which wrap around the entire exterior of the structure. Um, so this is very interesting. It might seem a, a bit like a digression, but it's very interesting to think about in relation to Akhtamar. The next slide, please. Um, 